Good afternoon. Welcome to the 67th episode of My First Job, the podcast. And today we are talking to someone who is doing an amazing job in a fast growing field, sports infrastructure. We talk of India not having enough medals or getting winning enough medals at the Olympics. But at the root of the entire problem is how well athletes are trained and have the facilities available to them. Vatsen actually has been a tennis player. So he knows what is in from the inside. And that, I think, explains his interest and the multifaceted nature of what he does. Welcome to the show, Vatsen. Good morning, it's sir. Great to have, it's great to have you on the show. So why don't you tell us about where your interest in sports infrastructure began on the tennis? <laughs> Was it at, with tennis itself? Um, honestly, uh, speaking, there was, uh, I mean, um, I had my brother who was uh, actually a tennis player who was uh, represented India for the Davis Cup. So, uh, okay. honestly speaking, uh, I was playing, I mean, I, it's one of the persons to whom I look up to. So, uh, we, uh, I also started playing tennis and of course, I played up to the national levels, but not uh, okay. come up to the uh, level of what my brother was. So, after a particular limit, I moved into the education line. So honestly, that is how the sports was there. But it was not just about uh, playing tennis, but I was also playing other sports like basketball and volleyball. So I would say I was a jack of a couple of sports then. Uh, <laughs> but that's good because you're, <laughs> you got into physical sports, which is, again, one of those things where, which, where re you require stadiums, you require infrastructure. And that is what really gets the interest of people going. But um, so what were your early school days like? What were the kind of things that you were interested in? So uh, when I was, uh, I mean, I studied uh, uh, in Vidya Mandir. So when I was studying, uh, the school was actually having a cricket team. And okay. I was not much of a cricket guy at that particular time. And, uh, <laughs> an was, yeah. okay. and uh, one of the major reasons being that since uh, I was staying in a place where there was not not, a, not there as a playground. Our parents uh, put us into a sport basically to have some physical uh, movement in our body, to be physically fit. So usually what happens is that kids used to go out and play. So what they did was that since we did not have a park nearby our place, they put us into a tennis court which was like hardly uh, 400, 500 meters away from our place. So we started okay. playing tennis and I started enjoying the game. Uh, when I was young, so it was more of a fun-filled uh, thing, which made us get into the level, honestly. So the coaches saw a couple of, I mean, saw the talent in me, and he started seeing that I have to start going for some tournaments, and that's how uh, my interest in tennis uh, started. Okay, okay, and then college, what happened? What were the kind of things that you did in college? You graduated so, well, mechanical engineer, right? You. Yeah, I graduated as a mechanical engineer and I have okay. the Nine University uh, board. So I studied okay. in MN engineering and uh, we came through that. So one of the good things is that since I was doing physical fitness and tennis, which was coming in, I was played, I was exposed to other games too. Like I was playing volleyball, I was playing basketball, I was playing uh, a little bit of, um, what do you say, kabaddi with the college team. <laughs> but then after... I stopped tennis when I was actually uh, in 12th. So being since I did not go big in that, and then, but I was having my own way of doing my own physical fitness. I was playing basketball with, uh, with the basketball team and they okay. found that I was doing pretty well. And so I uh, represented my college for the basketball team also. And uh, okay. we started playing, uh, I mean, we had a team for basketball. And since I knew tennis, I played tennis also for the college at that particular time. <laughs> So basically, okay. I think I was a jack of all uh, sport and uh, you know, master master in uh, both yeah. uh, Okay. So, what was your first job? What my uh, first job? Yeah. So, huh. after I finished my mechanical engineering, uh, I uh, see the one thing which I had in my mind. I should say I, I should actually go a little bit back before I got my first job. 
So when I was actually in uh, 10th or 12th, so basically the reason why we are educated and everything is because of my father he was running an industry at that particular time. Uh, it was a mechanical based uh, company, it was a foundry basically, like uh, doing okay. a with uh, copper based alloys. So uh, it was there in the back of my mind where I didn't want the company to go, go away after one generation of work is being done. So basically, this is the sweat and blood of his which built the company. So I wanted to run that company too at that particular time. I mean, I had a mind to do it. And that is the reason why I chose that I want to do mechanical engineering. Okay. Number one, it is an it is an evergreen field. Like you can branch right. into anything you want, like you said. Right. And also, it was the backup. I mean, I shouldn't say backup. It was the main education which I needed for me to run the industry too. Right. Technically, to understand about it. So uh, once I finished my college in uh, 2005, within a week, uh, I entered into a uh, valve industry. Okay. So like um, I was one of the, I think I would have been one of the first uh, like gifted guy where I finished my uh, last year exam. And within a week, I was taken into a small scale industry <laughs> for uh, that you really so you were <laughs> So you were yes. very clear about which direction you wanted your career to go in. Yes, I was very clear with the direction of what I want to be educated with, what I wanted to know. So I was very clear in that part alone. But then a little, I did not plan as such. So there, to plan a couple of things, uh, decisions which were supposed to be made were not in my hand. So few things had to change for me to move into that. Okay. For example, uh, even though the company is being run by my father, it's not like I just can't enter in. So if you had a partner means there is, there is supposed to be some changes. So right. all those things were there. So slowly only all these things can integrate into it. So I had to wait. So during those times, what had to be done is what I started. So at that particular time, we thought I thought that I had to get into a company where I learn how to run the business. But basically, the first thing which I did was I learned how not to run a business, <laughs> which will actually make us be successful, honestly. Right. So what are all the mistakes which you are never supposed to do is what I learned first. Okay. And that was the first job which I which I got into. Taught me that uh, what I should not do if I want to run my own business. Right. <laughs> yes. Now those lessons are lifelong. Okay. So where did the interest in looking at sports infrastructure begin? So, um, honestly, it was an opportunity which I got and that is when um, I started liking doing the sports infrastructure line. So basically, if you see means, uh, what happened was, uh, um, once I finished, as I told you, I was in a small scale industry company in Chennai, I got another opportunity to go to uh, another company in uh, which was Singapore based. So, I worked in a different environment for six months. But then I realized that with my kind of a mindset and uh, being young at that time, the ego which I had, it looked like I couldn't work under anybody. That's the truth. I should say that I did have cover. I mean, being young, when you come out, you want to explore a lot of things. You'll right. be like, I know everything kind of a structure. So that ego right. basically decided that I will not be able to work under anybody. So once when I, when we were doing all those things, my brother and I got an opportunity where we had to run a franchisee for a showroom, I mean, franchisee showroom for a fitness equipment company. Okay. And uh, that is where uh, things started. So when we found out that the knowledge which was there in the market for people, it's just like somebody said, I want this. People just give it. There has never been a solution. So basically like, what is it required for? What do they want? Their requirement may be A, but they would be given B. So that is when we started uh, deciding that, yes, we have to get into this line where uh, there is a lot of scope. Of course, it's your bread and butter. You need Can to... Can you uh, explain that in a little more detail, Vatsayan? I just want to understand why the franchisee, they didn't understand what is required? It was not about understanding. See, when it comes to the equipment uh, line, when you're doing it, so what happened is that, uh, like for example, gym equipment. So you're having a treadmill. So treadmill have variations in weights. 
So somebody says, I want to walk in a treadmill, but if he is 100 kgs, he cannot be given a specific treadmill because the cost is low. Or you just have to make a sale. So he says, my budget is 30,000, but I want a 100 kgs. Uh, he's, he's weighing 100 kgs. But he says, I want a 30,000 rupees uh, treadmill. But if its weight was only like around like 70 or 80 kgs is what it takes. He will be able to walk, but he won't be able to run. Okay. So the machine will not be able to take the load and there will be issues with it. So which means you have to, for according to the requirement of the person, the budget maybe is lesser, but you have to tell him what the situation is, how, why you have to go for this equipment, what are, what is the reason um, that this will not work, but you have to go for this or give him a solution. So you just not have only one equipment saying that, okay, this is what you have to do, but you have to tell him this is, this is what will work. So A will not work, B will work. So those things are something which have to be uh, transferred, a knowledge transfer need yeah. to be done, explain to them properly. Like it's not like 30,000 rupees is there, so I'll make a sale and then do it. So that was something which was happening a lot, which we found out at that particular point. Okay. So that is when we changed our uh, way of saying that, no, this is not the way it works. Because anyway, it's hard earned money of any, any person. They have to know what they're getting. Right. So that was so, the way to Huh. So then, uh, you know, it's quite a leap because a lot of people, like you said, franchise businesses, essentially, it's like uh, entrepreneurship, but under control in the sense that there is a certain, uh, you know, format which is given and you're expected to stick within that format. So how did you then decide that this is what you wanted to do? See, uh, yeah, see, franchising has its own. See, you're representing a company, so you have to follow the company's norm. So if you're taking a franchisee of company A, the company A is running in a system. So it's a, like how you say a reliance means they have a, they have their own set of rules, like what you have to do. Yes, yeah. you have it. But they never say that you are not supposed to do all these things. Okay. That is, they are open for ideas. They are open to do whatever you are having in your mind. They are also willing to grow. I mean, look, they also want you to grow along with the company. That is how most of the company's franchises work. It's not like you make the sale, I'll give you this much percentage. It's not like that. They are open to ideas. They do appreciate if, if there's an opening which is being done. All those things are there. But it's not like you're being constrained. Constraining okay. is basically like you are, it's an assumption which we take basically that we are constrained. It's not like we are constrained. Okay. okay. Once you know the rules and regulations, you can play with the rules and regulations without going away from it. But if there is something which can help you go above that, you are very much welcome by any company. If it is the, if, it, if it is for the good or good of the company, you okay. are allowed to do. So then, how was the transition? What were the steps to the transition, as far as you were concerned, in terms of building or creating infrastructure? So the steps of transition came because when we came to know that the infrastructure was not that great, like I said, when we were playing tennis, uh, what happens is we found out that for people to come inside, we found out that the places which are being made itself, say for example, uh, my first ever place which I started doing was with builders. So they had so many houses, you're supposed to give them some facilities. So what they called as the open space requirement, the OSR, you know, right. where OSR, yeah. nowadays, yeah. You are nowadays where you see the children's park are being done, like any big right. building which you see. So there are some children's park which are there. There are some, uh, what do you say, gazebos which are being made. In the right. spaces. So the company started doing some sports requirement which the community can actually enjoy. Right. So what happened is that when we found out that all these people are just doing concrete or giving it for the sake of doing it, we started approaching the company and saying that, sir, this is not what you're playing for. I mean, tennis is not played on cement. It is being played on a different surface. Yes. Like actually. So why don't you make a shift? For this much is the cost that you make. This is what you do. But... How we told them was that since you do this one, your, um, honestly speaking, the, it's a sales talk. So the sales talk went in saying that due to the cosmetic value of you giving such a nice thing, 
you would be able to do something better. Everybody is doing a similar thing. Why don't you do right. something like how the US Open is being played or uh, the, how right. the Australian Open is being played? So why don't you bring this inside? So first it was a marketing talk, but then we started getting the knowledge transfer of why it is being done. So right. that is how the line started getting in and uh, we started moving forward. Okay. Now that is a great opportunity because like you said, it all started from builders thinking that how do I differentiate my project? How do I give them? And most of them came up with the standard. There was a swimming pool and like you said, there was the OSR area. And then what do you do with that? So uh, what were among the first projects that you did where you actually put up proper tennis courts? So how the, did that come about? The first company, I mean, that's a, I don't know, it's like a, I can tell a little bit of egoistic way. It was a company uh, in Bangalore huh. where I went and uh, they liked the idea when I spoke to them. It was two tennis courts which come, came up, which they wanted to do. And I don't know, for some reason, Bangalore is one of the best places because they are the first one to try anything which comes new. Right. So the first tennis court which I did was in Bangalore. And uh, when I went to that uh, uh, purchase manager with the idea, when I showed him everything, and I told him this is how it is being done. So he took it up to his uh, vice president and he showed it. Okay. And he just said, uh, this is what you have to do, but we are doing it in cement. But they are saying this is the way this has to be done. And then when the VP called me and then we spoke about it and um, I gave him all the uh, inputs about why it is being done. What is the reason that you don't do concrete? Why you have to do this acrylic? After I gave him all the, what do you say, the facts basically on it. So basically, I mean, well, how these facts come in is that if it's tennis means they have their own international body. So ITF is the board. So we take the documents of the international board and give them the standard thing. This is what is being followed. We can have a look okay. at it. So right. he had a look at everything and then he was like, you said you are playing tennis and you have done this, but you don't look like one. I said, why don't you come <laughs> into the court? Why don't you come into the court and let's see how it's being, uh, how I play and then you will understand uh, why I'm talking about tennis uh, so much. Okay. So he said, <laughs> that's when he just gave a smile and said, since you know what you're doing, let's start off with it. So that is how my first ever order was actually received. Okay. Okay. How long did it take to build that court? And, you know, did you have to then evolve? Because it's from what you're telling me, it was actually concept selling. And then you, you had to get those uh, issues in place. So were there, uh, you know, what are the things that you had to navigate at that point? See, navigation is that, uh, see, main thing is the ignorance. Okay. Most of the most of the people are ignorant about what exactly these sports are, why the surface is being played on, what is the surface it has to be played on. Nobody knew. Everybody said hard court, they're like, hard court, what is the difference between playing in a US Open court and playing on a cement court? Both are hard only. Why don't we play it on that? So this was a kind of conversation which we were having. <laughs> so it was... So to get them to... <laughs> what understand. I'm as dumb as that. So please tell me what is the difference. Like you said, okay, that's a valid doubt. Hard court is supposed to be... What is the hardness a component of? What is the court supposed to be like? What is the difference between a grass court and a hard court? See, hard or court is... Yeah, for tennis, hmm. just, I'm just talking about tennis. So yeah. hard court means basically like... Uh, the what you see the US Open and all they are played on a base called it's being made on a seamless base called the asphalt base. So basically, what your roads are being done with, with the tar right. and the bitumen. So basically, that's how you have to do the base. Okay. So on top of the base, you have something called as a liquid material called as an acrylic, which is okay. put on top of this base, and then that is how you, uh, and then the line marking is being done, and you that's the surface which you use. So liquid base means you have. Something called as a cushion, you have something called as a resurfacer, uh, and then the color is being put on top of it, and that is how it's being played on. So it has around like three to five layers of cushion, according okay. to the uh, requirement of how the sport is. So the person who was talking about is that whether I put a paint on top of it or not, I let me put a concrete and then paint it on top of it. What is the big difference? It is a big difference because concrete is done on joints. So what happens? The joints crack. 
Right. So if the ball goes and hits on the crack, like how you play cricket nowadays with the spinning pitch, hits a crack, right. the ball goes somewhere else. You can't have tennis <laughs> playing like like you're playing a cricket match, right? So basically, that was the reason why I had to tell him, no sir, this is not the way it will be done. They don't play on. So to get them to understand all those things was uh, a big challenge at that particular point. Right. And uh, they were one of the first uh, ever company to start uh, doing the synthetic. I mean, as per the norms of the sport, they were one of the companies which was doing it at that time in Bangalore. Wow. So how many companies did you have to approach in real estate? And what were the other avenues that you explored at that point in time? Because, like, I mean, you're making it very clear that uh, infrastructure building, you literally have to start at the beginning because a lot of people it's only because they are forced by the market to do certain things that they're even considering it but then you have to bring them up to date on so many of the practices that you know are essential see yeah what i did was that the first order which i did was for the builder but after that uh, i switched my complete uh, okay we are working into it because the builders if you see they have only oversaws or doing some or they have to do right. a particular area but the major thing which I understood that if sports has to be taken seriously, it's not the builders who we go to. We started operating with the educational institutions. Okay. So because if you want sport to become very serious in our country, you need to start tapping it from the grassroots. So basically at a very young age. Right. So that is what you have. You can't have someone like uh, at the age of 17 and 18 coming inside. I mean, it would be like one, one in 100 which will happen. But... If you see to get that interest to come inside the sports and everything starts at a very, very young age. So we okay. started approaching the educational institutions, stating that it is better you start building up some sports infrastructure for the kids so that they will start enjoying the sport. Say, for example, like you, a small kid, like a five-year-old or six-year-old, you make them play on a surface which is on a sand or cement. They fall down, they get hurt. The push has to be given saying that you have to play. But if they are playing on a surface which has to which it has to be played on, maybe the scratches and everything will be a little bit more lesser comparatively. Okay. So so that you can just rub it off and say, please start playing, go ahead. So if you make them play on the right surface, maybe that will start making them enjoy it. So that was one of the reasons why. So from builders, we started moving completely into educational institutions and we are doing it for uh, Honestly speaking, education institution is the best place for me to uh, even start off with uh, anyway okay. because it's the last uh, level. Okay. So how many educational institutions did you have to, how many doors did you have to knock on before you finally scored and you know, got in? Initially, uh, honestly speaking, out of 10, maybe two people were open to do it. Okay. Initially to start off with because that time, as you said, uh, I would say that the level of sports which has come inside has come only after 2014 because of the government's norms, uh, I mean, government's uh, own, uh, what do you say? I shouldn't say yeah. in a very rude way that the government saw money coming into it. I shouldn't say it that way. But government also started uh, promoting sport like the Kalo right. India, the Fit right. India, all right. those things. All these things started coming only after 2014. So initially, if you see, means um, the school would have a team, but they would play only on a surface, whatever they have, like a much surface for a football, because wherever they're going for competition, also they were having only a much surface. So it did right. not make a difference. So if you see the sporting kids and all, they were all in the level of the schools and everything. But once they get into the college levels, up to the sports quota, they are there. But after that, you don't find them coming up after that. Right. So that is the reason why we thought that only if they could enjoy the sport, like how it's being played or on what they are playing, will the continuation of them to have the interest will be there. So that is why we started knocking into the educational institutions. Right. And uh, quite a few, honestly speaking, uh, again, those things also came up only from Hyderabad and Bangalore initially to start off with. And... Uh, okay. Uh, those schools opened up the avenue when we went in short. So basically, that also was a marketing trick where we used that 
this school is doing this right <laughs> this will help them get more uh, education yeah. yeah. that's why right. don't you also yeah. right. <laughs> so yeah. that that was just a sales yeah. um, yeah. in which yeah. comes the but no but we get you are right absolutely right because uh, while it is a great thing to have the whole point is that there has to be definitely a point of them being able to sell it to potential you know uh, students or parents who want to come in who are interested and isn't there a real difference or you know when uh, let's say people used to practice on the regular hard court and then they came to the professional level courts it would be difficult for them to change the game right it wasn't it would it, it will be okay. see yeah uh, as i said the ecosystem was there so if you for example if you uh, i can give i can put it out as our own cricket team so when right. they are going for a tour they don't go just uh-huh. three two or three days before a match is being played they go right. at least a week or week and a half they play some warm up matches right or just to get accustomed to the system the, the weather accustomed right. to accustomed to the pitches what they are playing so all these things right. are there so basically right. if you see our team coming to india like we have a spinning pitch is what everybody talks about mm. so you see a team coming over here a week or week and a half before they start practicing on those pitches mm. or some people some mm. uh, countries also come like 10 days earlier and they start practicing that is how every uh, sport needs to be so if you're playing in a one surface and then you're moving to another surface it will be a difficult Extent. thing to perform yeah yeah so you moved from builders you said to educational institutions so in the last few years what do you think has changed what has been your approach and how have you evolved this over the years see the educational institutions have now uh, started uh, their own academies and they are putting in people for practicing and uh, they are hiring coaches uh, who are now having knowledge with regards to fitness and uh, it's all mainly because of the uh, what do you say the before was like now it is the uh, importance of how why the kids need to be fit nowadays you don't find so many parks where you have a kids running in there to play in the slide or anything or half the park whichever is open you see is empty or you see right. 30 or 40 year old people who are like the previous generation or the generation before that who go inside to the open area and they will put the stick and they will take cricket but it's also one of these but if you see the current generation is not happening so i find that many schools are starting to put in a little bit of a fitness level to find out what the condition of the kid is like physically how good they are so like when i see my kids uh, doing it i get a report card from them a report card specifically for physical uh, fitness like what they are doing how much they are able to jump at least a basic thing like how much they are able to push how are they doing when they are falling what is their eye hand eye coordination all those things are coming up so basically so i would say all these things is because of the exposure which they have got and they have understood the importance of having these physical fitness is inside so next level which has to be evolved is that how to create this as an interest and uh, to make them uh, pursue something if they do have the talent to get inside sports and do it that is the next step is what i feel that is the evolve which i have seen basically now okay. people are being open about taking up sport before i find it I mean, I was lucky enough that my parents were actually uh, supporting us, but right. the current generation also is coming up to take up sports as something is evolved. Uh, I mean, is uh, what I see as a big change uh, in the current years. Okay, no, I think you've made some wonderful points on why you know what you think is a game to be played. The earlier thing was just you had a ground and you went and played. there wasn't any professional aspiration beyond the point of saying okay uh, it's physical movement fitness all of those things come in and because everything is reduced you don't have as many open spaces as before and because of the growth of a lot of the digital games and virtual games which have come in uh, natural tendency is to exert yourself less physically but 
one aspect is having this what about you know having more tournaments you think that ecosystem is the next level that needs to be tackled no ecosystem if you see me is not just about having tournaments and doing all those things see honestly yeah, if you put it this way me uh, to us tell you cricket has become huge in india is because everybody sees that there's an ecosystem so you have something like a ranji if you perform very well in a ranji you are then moved to the indian cricket team so there is a ecosystem of how you have to go up right similarly see with other sports they are just coming up right now like first thing is that you need to have an inspiration so you have an inspiration not to come in meet after pv sindhu started winning you see so many people picking up a badminton racket and getting up into badminton yeah yeah so <laughs> badminton now there are infrastructure has opened up right but it is not about pv sindhu did not come up just in one way so it, it, it took her so much time for her to practice so much of training to be done and the mental fitness whatever is to be uh, i mean they have to be mentally trained it's just about they can equally match in hitting but it also it's about the mental right. strength that you have when you're competing in all those uh, levels so all these people have come up with their experience and the uh, stuff so the ecosystem is not just about the competition but it's also about the infrastructure I means it's not just about the sport doing that infrastructure it's about having the coach having them to train having them to last long so like if it's a five hour match means they have to withstand the five hour match they can't just right. be playing for four hours and then <laughs> the other guy is going to have the upper hand with you they're going to finish it after two hours right so if it's a three to four hours match you have to be able to play for three to four hours like a football right. which means it's a one and a half hours game you have to run the entire one and a half hours of game if you don't yeah. you're going to be moved yeah no matter how good you yeah no that's true. how good you are after if you can last only for 30 minutes out of uh, one and a half hours game you will be sub yeah after 30 minutes so then you're saying this is literally a culture right uh, as far as it, it has to be an overall culture where earlier you had this pursuit of indian parents very happy with their ch- children doing well academically and then you had to change to the point where they thought sport was an option and like you said you have to have the inspiration so a sindhu winning or a neeraj chopra getting into you know winning the javelin uh, so has suddenly changed and you have the time from the time of prakash padukone you have this thing of badminton but you didn't have an inspirational figure so maybe that was the whole point there's a generation which grew up on prakash padukone or there was ramesh krishnan and ramanathan krishnan the earlier stalwarts in the entire uh, tennis fraternity so do you think they came up in spite of the fact or they were the people who managed and if you have the infrastructure and the ecosystem what are the other components of the ecosystem that you think need to be falling in place see uh, the ecosystem uh, basically seems uh, i'll tell you one thing like anybody who is taking the sport the first worry is that will he be able to come up will he be able to make a living out of it that's the first right. question which everybody uh, gets into but of course it's it depends upon the person who's uh, going to get inside and the uh, amount of aspiration which he's going i mean how much of hard work which he's going to put inside it won't happen like you can't happen like i start doing it today it won't like it's not like a math problem where 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 means i will go into 5 into 5 is equal to 25 it's not like one day job right. which will happen so and neeraj chopra has become a neeraj chopra because he has been practicing for like around for 10 to 15 years for him to come up to yes this yes so no one sees that but <laughs> yeah so there's yeah. a lot of support which is required for all these uh, upcoming or aspiring uh, people who are coming up coming yeah. yeah. athletes who yeah. have to come inside so right. uh, there is a long way i, I would say we are still long way but we are at least starting to have an ecosystem for all this sport like how cricket only has like you said you said ram ramesh krishnan ram nanak krishnan for tennis but after that you can talk about leander pace and mahesh bhupati but they are like 20 30 yeah. years back so cricket yeah. is an yeah. aspiration which you are having because you had had a kapil dev after kapil dev you have had a sachin like names just keep coming here yeah. 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 so after yeah. sachin you are saying that there is a virat there is a dhoni there is a virat after virat now they are talking about gil so you see yeah. many people coming up into the system so similarly you have to right. see a lot of people coming up those system for them to actually get inspired and start doing it 
so that is uh, that is Absolutely. it will take time it's not like it will happen uh, the very next day but the patience it, the level of dedication which needs to be there to come up to that level so what's in what's your uh, take right now are you fully on to sports infrastructure or you do you run the manufacturing bit as well how has your career progressed and what are your plans for the future so uh, i have uh, moved out from the uh, manufacturing unit okay. so uh, right now i'm completely into the uh, sports infrastructure field so um, it's not just about tennis which we do so we are uh, also into the uh, so we do any sport actually according to the norms of the uh, boards how the international board wants it as per the standard what they want is what we do and we educate people like why it has to be done what the why the norms have been given in such a way so uh, like we also do the uh, football fields the athletic tracks and we also get them certified by the world federation norms and by the world federation bodies and we are into those things too so basically um like you can i can i mean we have the facility i mean we have the uh what do you say the backup where we can do like what is being done for a european stadium you see uh, your epls and your uh, la ligas so we have the potential where we can do a similar kind of field in india itself. Okay. okay so we do that That's amazing and those, yeah and we how do you find how do you find the people to do these things because obviously you're getting together large teams of people there is a standard there are norms but how do you then source uh, everything from the design to the construction to the material to various other aspects that have to be looked into the design is see the main thing is that whenever you are doing about all these things you are supposed to know what exactly needs to be done okay so you need to train people accordingly like it's not i, I would say it's not rocket science it's easy to train people to do it so okay. the, it's very really easy to train these people but we can't let them do it on, on, on their own the thing is that if you have to train means you have to know the stuff completely first. right <laughs> so it took us time so if you ask me means i have been in this line for 17 years from 2007 right. till now means so if you ask me whether i know completely <laughs> No, I don't know. Okay. I'm still like I'm only like 70 to 80 percent of to where I need to know technically. I still for 20 percent I go out to the people, the manufacturing guys itself to ask them what the questions are, and I get okay. those clarified and doing all those things. So labor wise okay. to do this civil works and everything are all it's all the same. So you just need to have a team of engineers to whom you have to teach what needs to be done, and okay. those are something which is being taught in our colleges and schools and everything. If they do their practical exams and everything uh, simply, it's all simple to understand in that uh, civil works world. The only part comes in the flooring, how it is need to be installed, what needs to go inside for installation. For that, only if you get inside and you teach the team and you have to hold on to that team so that they can do it on their own. So okay. if you say a guy, if he does around like 10 fields, understanding the field and does 10 fields then the 11th field onwards you don't even have to uh, monitor much with him to <laughs> yeah, what he knows because what is he's just going to follow whatever <laughs> you have said he's just going to follow it unless yeah. another, i change the product if i don't <laughs> change the product like this is what is going to come do this they'll right. be able to do it that is the only thing so the person who is coming inside his mindset for uh, learning and uh, the person who is actually teaching the knowledge which he has these two are the main right. factors if you ask me for any thing to be uh, successful so yes yeah, so we when we do pan india we do face difficulties but we just travel to make sure that whatever is being done is being done further as per the norms and okay. uh, of course for the client's uh, purpose there are labs which come and test these and they certify this is the most okay. important thing and we get them certified and then we do it. When it comes to this huge project like hockey's and uh, football and uh, athletic track, you know, we get them certified too. Okay. Okay. So this is 
I mean, uh, one is like you said, you're starting from the ground up. The second is that there is a fair amount of expense involved. So the government is pitching in. Do you see an interest from the private sector coming in regularly? Or how is it that the corporates are approaching this? Are they looking at one particular spot or are they looking at the overall infrastructure? What is your sense? Actually, private, there are a lot of people who are coming inside. Okay. Reliance itself itself is doing a lot of things. Like the ISL, which is being uh, coming up, the football clubs and all, they have started building up their own facilities right. to have uh, more people to come and train and do all those things. So I find that for football, there's a small structure which is coming in after the ISL has started, the Indian uh, Football League, the Super League, whatever they yeah. have started. I feel that there is an ecosystem which is coming, is getting start, starting to form with regards to football. So you right. see a lot of people, whenever they have an open area, they just make a turf and they say, let's play football. At least the kids come or at least the previous uh, the generation, which is uh, next to us, are going and playing. They are playing and playing football. Right. Or at least right. they use the area to play cricket. So one way or the other, there are infrastructures which are being built and it's being used for football and cricket, at least as of now, which I see inside Chennai. But there are other places where many people are willing to build sports clubs and uh, they are uh, moving into training and setting up academies. All these things are happening. So, okay. they said it will take some more time for everything to come up. Yeah, but the good thing is that, like you said, there is movement from the private sector as well. And because they're beginning to see that. And there is a long-term goal where people are saying it's not enough. And you have... Uh, the US and Europe and China uh, walking away with all the medals at the Olympics. And there is some sense that India needs to step up to the podium and you can't have the occasional success, which I think recently in Commonwealth and all that, we've started getting a lot more medals than we used to earlier. But in your mind, see, like you said, it started at home. Uh, it was that your parents knew that you were talented, you and your brother were talented, but you were enrolled into tennis. So is there something that you can tell parents as to how they should be looking at this and what are the things that they have to keep in mind? Because you would naturally pass it on to your children, but uh, how is it that, what is the message you would have for parents? Um, first thing is that uh, pushing, I mean, even though there is something which is available with us to push it hmm. to the next generation, I mean, to our kids and everything, it's a difficult thing. We have to understand what their requirements are and how they want to be and, and what their interests are. So the first part, if you ask me, means first they have to enjoy the sport. And I find, uh, if you ask me, means I find people who are just being in the education in line. Then uh, people just being in education and with the sport, they do far more better than the person who is just being in education. Okay. For the only major reason being that, first thing is first that you will learn how to lose. So uh, if you ask me, you will be able to understand what a failure is. If you get into competitions, if you get into uh, this one. So people just keep winning. Winning is one thing which you can do. But how you get up after you fail? Yeah. Like if you say like any any sport person, Sajin Tendulkar scored a duck in his first innings. He did not, if he has gone crying, he would have not been the person who had scored 100 centuries for the country. Right. So basically, right. Uh, if you ask me, means how how you can, uh, it will make you a better person. I feel that the sports will make you a better person in life. It will make you uh, more uh, grounded. It will teach you how it will actually, uh, how you can pick up yourself, that you will not be down. You have a way to come up. So the fighting spirit, it's also not about sport, even in your own personal life, if there's losses, it will teach you how you can actually uh, find a way That's to come up. So at least for that reason, uh, I feel that you have to get into something uh, into sport for that one of the reasons, any kind of sport. I wouldn't say that it has to be only physical, it can even be a chess, it can even be a 
mental uh, this one but i feel that nowadays all the kids don't know like what it is to lose what is it to be said no to if they say no they are like trying and we just i just find that many people many even my friends kids i tell them like when you say no it has to be a no it can't be no and then later on it can't be like after tantrum is being thrown okay let me just stop this tantrum and give to them so right, right. Right. which i feel so they as a kid you have to teach them what a loss is otherwise it will be difficult for a generation to understand what how to come up if uh, that happens so i feel a sport with something which will make a person better in their uh, life i would say not just about winning and losing or winning a competition but as a person itself it will make them more uh, strong is what i feel and that's so true that's so true that uh you know mental toughness is just as important as physical toughness and the other great thing about sport is that you naturally become uh you know physically aware of the need to be fit in most of the cases it's like okay i don't need to move at all <laughs> i'm in a game and like you said if it's all about winning and you don't learn about losing at all you just not developing the facets that are necessary which is so important for you to do later on in life because life is not going to be all about winning it's never it's never going to be a a situation where you excel and you manage to win at everything that you do but is there a way out to fit uh, you've touched on a very important point i know we've gone a little away from sport infrastructure but i think what you just said needs to be driven home far more powerfully how is this possible now having the infrastructure is one thing but the other part is that the mental aspect of using that infrastructure and making it a part of the curriculum right now sports i think is or do you think that programs like hello india or the policy of the government is helping to drive that awareness at the ground level See, Hello India definitely is helping because the government have started uh, building the infrastructure. What is required now? They are okay. seeing stage, state to state, many places. If you see, means um, the Hello India project, we see the fields, like the football fields are coming up. There are athletic tracks which are coming up. So for these big sport, for where the land requirement is higher, the government is doing whatever is possible from their end, even for the small sports and stuff. but if you are asking about how it has to be drilled into the kids means it depends upon the uh, it has to start from the educational institution as i said educational institutions have started doing it whether for the commercial aspect or whether it's for other aspects they have started doing it they are they are recruiting people who can it's not like a pd okay you be a pt teacher it's not like that they are looking into companies who are getting certified who are certified uh, trainers or sorry or a certified coach who are being hired nowadays and those are the kind of people who are taking them into sport but of course parents backing is required uh, where they also have to push it out from their house saying that no it's okay even if you do it okay yeah. just go ahead and yeah. play right just keep doing it that fear of loss is something which needs to be spoken if it's if it has to be done through counseling it has to be done through counseling so those are the kind of areas which as i said which we have not it worked into and uh, i mean is something which is coming up and uh, we see a lot of foundations who are taking up those kind of talents and they are preparing them mentally too there are foundations which have started by the private sector companies itself okay who are having the sports institutes and sponsoring uh, uh, the talented uh, athletes nowadays athletes who are out there yeah. and uh, there is also a very real problem that's of uh, schools not having the infrastructure themselves i i saying for our generation my generation at least having a ground was like it was almost taken for granted somewhere near your house or the school itself would have a very large ground by default but now the space is shrunk so there could be some schools which are doing very well academically but have practically no infrastructure 
or in terms of sports infrastructure. So it's almost as if the development is very one-sided, academically brilliant, but physically the emphasis is not as much. How do you correct that? Or because there is a real problem of land being a problem. I mean, land being an issue. See, uh, one thing which I like about the present educational institutions are at least they are upright, open, saying that we don't have the space where we want to do all these things. I mean, we, we are not able to cater to all these things, so you might have to look for external help. At least they are at least open about all these things. But there are schools with whatever area they have, they are trying to bring in sports. Okay. And say, for example, like what you're saying about the government also, now that new national education policy which has come inside, they require this many sports to be there, come what may. At least if you find out that there is a space of around like 5,000, 6,000 square feet, nowadays the schools are doing at least a 5,000, 6,000 square feet play area, which can be used for three or four different sports. Okay. So at least these things are slowly coming up. So as I said, uh, see the main thing for an education institution is to educate the kids. But right. the infrastructure which they are bringing in for the kids to dispense the, the to take out the energy basically at the five-year-old kid the energy which he has the energy is not being uh, sent out. He's going to have <laughs> shouting inside the class itself, and he's going to be throwing tantrums inside the class itself. Yeah. So the energy has to be taken out. So before it all, we used to see me, there, was, there used to be a, um, what do you say, the PT period used to be only like once or twice right. a week. Right. Nowadays right. you find that it's there for the kids like on an everyday basis. So I would prefer being right now on a PT period right now, like where five days a week, every day I have a PT period where I can run around, which was not the case at that particular time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, uh, which brings us to the focus i think we've gone a little away from careers because but you are doing the foundational work in terms of the infrastructure because that i think is and that is the longest game to play so in terms of careers what are the options that children who are looking at saying what can i do in sports infrastructure there is sports management now, which is slowly coming up because it's saying we'll cater to sports and there is the psychological aspect, there's a the physical aspect. But in terms of sports infrastructure, what do you think are the options that are opening up for students or people looking to get build a career in this? See, sports infrastructure is... Uh... More the people come and say, the more the infrastructure is required. So, like already seen, there are more houses, more people, more houses. Yes. So, more people is going to be there. So, infrastructure needs to be built. And right. uh, as you say, that there are a lot of schools which are being opened. So, there will be some more sports infrastructure which will be coming inside. So, as you see, all these lines which are being opened up, you will have one way or the other. Even actually, if you ask me, even the corporates like IT professionals who are there, they themselves are building some infrastructure because they want those people to get into some physical activity. So a gym right. or or a play like a badminton area or a carambore area for them for their leisure time, something or other is being opened up. So if you see, right. there's a lot of scope which has come inside and there are not many people in India who do sports infrastructure by understanding it properly and doing it there are not much people in India so honestly if you say taking it up as a career the openings are there a lot I would say there is more uh, demand but the supply is less okay. I put it that way <laughs> people are already starting to spend on sports or right. their infrastructure they right. find that there are 10, 10, 10 players who want to do me. There are only two people, two or three people who want to do this. I mean, who are there to do it? But there are who 10 players. Right. Yeah. 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 So if you see the demand and supply, means there's a lot of demand, but the supply is it's limited. Less. Yeah. yeah. It's very limited. So, yes, there is a lot of scope which is there. There is a lot of gap which needs to be covered with the supply. Yeah. No, I think you've, uh, you've really opened up. A whole lot of options that and i think uh, you mentioned briefly that uh, every athlete needs a coach needs a trainer needs a physical fitness program 
needs nutrition, needs psychological counseling. All of these things are potential careers. So those are uh, amazing fields to be in because it means that you can then specialize in what you like doing. And if you're one of those people, then you can actually be with those stars and <laughs> maybe one see them. From the stars. Stars. <laughs> or if it's not being with them, one of them was creating it. <laughs> yeah. So that's the... So, you know, it's great. We've almost spent an hour. So I'd just like to close on uh, how you think your career has been defined. Is it that you're doing what you really like and you've found because there's this thing saying that okay you do something for money and you do something because you're passionate about it in your case let's end or close on that note <laughs> honestly speaking yeah everybody needs to it's my bread and butter honestly but i loved i started loving to do the sports infrastructure because as i said when we were playing the infrastructures were not available Okay. And there is something which we want to bring in. And honestly, uh, to put it out for the future also, if you ask me, I would like to have some more academies also to be started. Not just about building infrastructure alone. Right. Um, so let me say I would like to be uh, happy like if I can create stars or if I can make a group of people getting more fitter. So uh, to build our own uh, infrastructure and then to have an academy of our own of our own where we can have uh, a lot of people to train is one of the ideas which is available uh, which is there uh, for me to do so okay. one once once goal is set i just push it out to another goal which i want to do so infrastructure building yes it's happening but now i want to i feel like now building an infrastructure where i can have a, a care where i can do it on my own and have an academy where i can run it and have uh, kids and others who can come and uh, play. Athletes who will, yeah, who will go on to win. And it's yeah. wonderful, Vatan, because I think on that note where you said it's not just about winning, you have to learn to lose as well. And that is such an important lesson for us, which doesn't come merely from uh, commercial successes. It comes from, uh, you know, doing so many things that you're passionate about. Thank you for coming on the show. And uh, any final thoughts that you would like to close with? Final thoughts? Uh, <laughs> I think like, everywhere there is, uh, somewhere or the other, there's always a scope to improve. And uh, wherever is there, I mean, you can find or you can do a work from wherever it is. But honestly, passion, you have to be aggressive about it. You have to be hardworking. Come up what whatever it means. As you said, like, you have to learn from your mistakes and move ahead from your mistakes is what uh, brings everybody uh, successful is what I would say. Thank you, Vatan, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you so much.